Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll talk about the El Gamal Digital Signature Scheme, uh, which is going to be based, of course, in many of the things that we did for the El Gamal encryption. Uh, one of them is that it's based on the difficulty of computer and discrete logarithms. So similar to what the El Gamal encryption is. So the security of the El Gamal, at least the school book, is based on the whether or not you can compute uh, discrete logarithms efficiently. And you remember, up to now, there is no efficient algorithm that can do that. Okay, so the you remember what we did in the and the RSA digital signature. The RSA digital signature is very similar to the encryption decryption using the RSA. This is not the case for the Elgamal digital signature, which is quite different from the encryption decryption using the Elgamal. And you will see in a second why is that very different. So actually the generation of the key it's gonna have actually a little bit more uh, computations uh, than the one we actually did for the Elgamal. Okay, so, but we're gonna start almost exactly the same way. So we uh, have to set up the uh, the generation key, which is done by Bob in this case, or whoever wants to sign the messages. So whoever wants to sign the messages is the person who has to do the generation key he will make uh he or she will make something public and it will have something that is for the private key where that that's the uh, piece of information that allows you to sign the messages so just to recall this is this part that is here is exactly the same the key generation um, algorithm for the elgamal encryption so which is the same for the elgamal signature so let's remember that. So Bob or whoever they wants to sign the messages is going to choose a large prime, at least at 1024 bits for security reasons. So that's because uh, the script logs with this length are really difficult to compute. And in some cases you can't, can't compute them. Uh, Bob also chooses alpha, which is an element of ZP star, which is a generator of this group, of this cyclic group. So that's one of the things that she chooses P alpha and also chooses a random number between 2 and P minus 1, including 2 and P minus 2. Now, this random number that Bob chooses is it has to this has to be kept secret. And this is actually the private key for Bob. Then now Bob computes this uh, number B, which is uh, the generator to the whatever this random number was chosen before, modulo the prime. And this B is going to be part of the public key. So the Bob public key is going to be the prime, the generator, and B, which was computed in this way. So if you look at this, this was exactly the same that we did for the El Gamal encryption. So not nothing different so far. All right. So and then I'm just emphasizing here that the public, the private key is just that number B that was chosen at random. Okay. So if you remember, I'm going to describe in this video only the part of the signature algorithm. So in the next one, we'll talk about, about the verification algorithm. So Bob, which is the person who wants to sign the messages, has the private key, which in this case is B, and the public key, which in this case is these three numbers that are here, P, alpha, and B. And let's describe the uh, signature algorithm. Remember, for the signature algorithm, you always need the message and the private key. So these are the inputs of the signature algorithm. And that's the one we're going to describe here for the Elgamal. So let's look at the signature algorithm for the Elgamal. As I mentioned before, the input for that is the message M that you want to sign and the private key, which in this case is B. Now the output of this signature algorithm will, will be, of course, a signature. Now the signature in this particular case for the Elgamal is going to be a pair of numbers R and S. So this is a little bit different from the RSA signature, which is only one number. You remember that we denote it by S. So in this case, the signature for the Elgamal is going to be just two numbers. And we're going to call this the signature parameters, R and S. So the that's just the input and the output. So let's now describe what is the signature algorithm. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a random ephemeral key, which is this uh, definition of ephemeral key is uh, the same as we had in the Elgamal. It's just basically a number between 0 and P minus 2, where P is the prime number that we chose at the beginning, the large prime number. And we denote it by K sub E. And not, 
it has, to, it has to be random, but it has to have this property that k sub e and p minus 1 do not have any, they don't have any co common factor. So the well, another way to say it is that the GCD between k sub e and p minus 1 has to be 1. So which is a number there, we call the f metal key with that property. Now in this case is where we're actually going to compute the signature, which is a pair of numbers. So, so we're going to compute the signature parameters, which are R and S. And R is just the this alpha, which is the generator for the group, to the K sub E, which is the number I chose in step number one, modulo the prime number. And S is equal to this, is equal to the message minus uh, B here. And this B, remember, is the private key, uh, the private exponent for, for uh, Bob. And R is already computed here. So this R that is here is exactly the same as this one over here. And then times the inverse uh, of K of E modulo P minus 1. Now, if you look at this inverse here, that's why we ask for this condition that the P minus 1 and key and K of E, they don't have any common factor, so I can actually find the inverse of this number here for and inverse and P minus 1. All right, so that's that's basically what it is. That's the signature algorithm. So that's how I we sign messages. So the signature will be this pair of numbers R and S. Now let's look at a, a small example. A small example, I mean uh, a signature algorithm for the Elgamal that has small numbers. So let's look at the example here. So suppose that Bob has a public parameters and let's assume that they were already computed. And if you wonder how they computed just the same way you do with the Elgamal. So the public parameters are, or the public key is P, alpha and B. P is this prime number, alpha. This is gonna be a generator of ZP star, which in this case is this number. And 230, 239 is that, um, modular exponentiation that you have to do uh, there. And the private key is gonna be 105. So this is all the information that Bob has. This is public and this is private. So 105 here is gonna be B. That's the number B that we described before. So let's assume a little bit more and then assume that Bob wants to sign the message 95. Now this message has to be between one and P minus two. The prime number that we chose uh, here. So P here is 541, so P minus 2 will be 539. So that we should choose a message to sign. So remember, what is the signature algorithm? The first thing I have to do is I have to uh, find the ephemeral or choose the ephemeral key randomly. And for to do that, you will actually use a true random number generator here to choose that in here. So it's totally random. So we're going to choose a number here between 0 and P minus 2, which is exactly what the algorithm calls for in here. Let me scroll all the way up here between zero and P minus two. In this particular case, P minus two, as we saw earlier here is just 539 with the property that this number, uh, the ephemeral key and P minus one do not have any common factor. So in this particular case, I need to choose my K sub E in such a way that doesn't have any common factors when with 540 in this case. So we can choose, for example, this is just one of the many possibilities. We can use the ephemeral key to be 31. All right, so with that ephemeral key, now we are able to actually uh, find what the signature is, which is the pair of numbers that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to compute the signature, which are the parameters R and S. Now remember that the R is always the generator to the ephemeral key, modulo the prime. The generator is 128. The ephemeral key is 31, that's what we call what we chose in here, and that's modulo the prime, 541. If you do this modular exponentiation that is here using the square multiply algorithm, for example, you will get that r is 280. And then, so that's r, that's part of the signature. Now, the other part of the signature is the number s. So the number s uh, from the algorithm is the message minus the private key times the R that was computed here, which in this case is 280, times the inverse of the ephemeral key modulo P minus one. In this particular case, our M is 95. The private key is 105. If you look up, that's what it's gonna be. R is 280 that was computed here. 
and then I have to find the inverse of the ephemeral key. The ephemeral key, our choice was 31, so it's 31, the inverse of that modulo, 540. If you actually do this computation, you do the usual multiplication and subtraction here, you're gonna get this number, negative uh, 29,305, times the inverse of 31 modulo 540, that's the P minus one. Now, the inverse, uh, I think we talked about this several times, is when you need to compute the inverse of a number, modulo some other number, um, first of all, you have to make sure that the, the number this 540 and 31 do not have any common factors in other words the gcd between 31 and 540 is one the reason for that is because then in in that case you can apply the extended uh, uh greater common uh, divisor to write down this equation like this so if i have this gcd between these two numbers is one i can always find a linear combination of 31 and 540 with this coefficient that give me one so S and T. This coefficient that is here will be the inverse of 31 modulo 540. Now, it is entirely possible that this number that is S here gives you a negative number. If it gives you a negative number, you always have to do it modulo 540. Now, remember this modulo 540 is always a positive or a zero. So in this case it won't be zero, but it will be positive. So if you actually do this, if you do this thing that uh, you clean algorithm here, you're gonna find that S is negative. That's fine, you just do this number modulo 540. And if you actually do that, you're gonna get 331, which is the inverse of 31 modulo 540. So that's why I replace it right here. Now, if you don't remember how to do that, go back to the uh, that part of how to find the extended GCD and then you will see how you can find S here. So now, what you can do is just go ahead and multiply this uh, the usual way. So you can get uh, this number here, which is negative. You take that modulo 540, and remember this modulo 540 has to give you a positive number or zero, because that's what we are doing. The modulo means the remainder. The remainder is always a positive number or zero. So if you do this modular here, take the remainder of this divided by 540, you get this remainder, which is 65. So that would be the order, the other part of the signature. That would be that S. Now probably the, my choice of S here was this S here is not the same as, as this S. Is This is the S for this GCD. All right. So now what we have is then the signature parameters are this pair of numbers which is 280, which was the R, and then the S that was computed right here, the 65. So let's see let's see the picture here. So the picture will be like this. So once you are all done uh, computing your digital signature here, which will be this pair of numbers with Bob having access to the private key, and this he's the only one who has access to that private key. Then with this uh, message 95, together with the signature, which is in this case for the Elga mod will be a pair of numbers. So he sends that through the insecure channel and then Alice uh, will get the message and the signature. Again, I'm gonna repeat this again. You will not actually do this in practice, uh, sending this in plain sight. You will, uh, Bob will do this and they will, he will encrypt this whole thing before sending that to Alice. So. Of course, the message is not visible to any attacker. So he will do that using some symmetric uh, cipher, for example, the advanced encryption standard. So just one of them. So that's basically uh, the example I wanted to talk about. So this is just the example of doing the signature. So Bob does sign this message 95, and then it gets uh, two numbers, which are in this case of the Elgamal as the signature and then Alice gets this thing here. So now Alice, the job of Alice will be actually to check whether or not this signature correspond or is valid to this message according to the public parameters that Bob has published uh, somewhere on the web. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do in the next video. So in the next video, we're gonna see the verification algorithm. So how will Alice be sure that this is actually the signature corresponding to the message 95? So we'll do that in the next video. So I will stop the video now and I will see you next time.